Hello and welcome to Where's the Bandwagon? My name's Will and in a minute you'll hear me and Ty talk all things Game of Thrones. But before we get started, just a quick word of warning. There will be major spoilers for all eight seasons of Game of Thrones. So if you haven't seen them, please listen to one of our other podcasts. You have been warned. So, Game of Thrones. Uh, you yeah. didn't. You didn't finish it, did you? Still, you haven't, did. <laughs> Still haven't finished and the final episode. What, um, so, what did you get to? Uh, I got to Are You Killing the White Walker? And well, spo- spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't seen season eight or or any of them. Actually, we'll be spoiling all eight seasons of Game of Thrones. So that's just a, we'll yeah. probably put that in the intro. But Please yeah, listen to this if you if you uh, want to watch it from the start. Yeah, though, so you got yeah. to Aya killing, spoiler alert, the White Walker. <laughs> yeah, and it just it just felt like I wasted so many hours of my life. Just What, of the of season of eight? The, or in no, of the whole show, you know. For, Spent no, years no, waiting. Wait, no, what do you think? And waiting I, two years as well for that? Yeah, yeah, no, I get... I, I'll go on to a bit about why I'm... Because I, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the last season at all. I thought that the first seven seasons... I know a lot of people actually had issues with season seven. Um, I think somewhat of it was obviously after season five, most of the story arcs were no longer by George R. Yeah. R. Martin because he stopped uh, stopped writing the books. And I feel like there are a lot of people that were just like saying that just because George hadn't written it, they had they, they were they were nitpicking some things. Yeah. So I know a lot of people didn't like season six. Season six wasn't great in my opinion, apart for well, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't as good as the rest of them, apart from Cersei blowing up the sept, which was. A sequence which is yeah, done <laughs> done so well. Season seven I enjoyed yeah. a lot. There were things which were like fan fiction type things. So coming into season eight, Brianna Tarth and Jamie getting together. Yeah. That was like fan fiction. Like Jamie is the most it's it, we know that he's one of the most good looking people in Seven Kingdoms. He's one of the most he's a prince, he's head of the King's Guard, and it's like he would never. I, they. I didn't feel any. Not only did I not feel any sexual te- chemistry between those two, I just felt like there would be no way that he, he who is one of the, he's probably, he could get any girl, and he just wouldn't go for it at all. You know. Also, why would he move away from his sister? He's done a lot of things. He's done a lot of things for her, <laughs> yep. and throw that away for like for whatever reason because they just beaten. Because oh, I just killed the White Walkers or whatever it was. Or was that before? Oh, how did you know? If you hadn't seen. Episode four, isn't it? Episode four, were they? Were they after? No, yeah, it was after. But yeah, yeah. there's spoilers on Facebook. Oh right, you know, you oh, so you got it spoiled yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. So that was one of the things. But season eight, my god, I got a, when when it was released. There was only going to be six episodes. I was like, how can they possibly wrap up these ten years in six episodes? Which is just. But that was. I was kind of like, oh no! But actually, I was thinking. Every episode is going to be jam packed. You know, every episode is going to be full to the brim. I mean, and then the first episode comes out, and you're already next to next to nothing. Yep, next you're to nothing already, you're already longing for more. Yeah. It's like, is is it? We've got six episodes to work with. Is this yeah. it? Is yeah. this all you're going to put in there? Leave us with a cliffhanger. Is, is that is that it? The episode one, <laughs> nothing happened. Episode two, nothing really happened. No. So, so <laughs> episode episode three, I enjoyed. There were some things I've watched some videos saying about how ridiculous the battle tactics are of people defending Winterfell yeah. for visual effect. So I liked the Dothraki running in at the beginning with their flaming swords. I enjoyed that. That looked really cool. And if that had been the only stupid decision that they'd made, I'd have been like, that's fine. You know, vis- Visually, it looked stunning. It was ominous seeing all the flames go out at the beginning. So I enjoyed that. But there were things like you know the I, I can't remember what they're called the the massive machines which catapult the flaming uh, fireballs in being no they they're called something else like, <laughs> I didn't know yeah what? they're called something they're called what? something exactly. <laughs> uh, they were at, like the front line yeah you, don't, you put you them don't inside put them, yeah. things like that you know nitpicking and again I if if the season and the episode had gone well people wouldn't bring these things up it's That's when true. people don't That's enjoy true. something yeah. They are confused in themselves. They try and find. They want to know why they don't like it. Some people know instantly. Other people, like me, uh, I had this with Star Wars Episode Eight. 
I didn't know why I didn't like it. So I went to YouTube to see people criticising it so that I could... Yeah. I think I think part of the problem was uh, the producers. I think they wanted to do, and because this was going to be like the final big battle, the, the one battle everyone's looking forward to, mm. they just wanted to do too much, and yeah. they did do too much. Yeah. Uh, if you look back at some of the greatest battles in the whole show... There's never been so much done. <sighs> yeah, that the one thing I have with the I think it's the writers D and D. I can't remember what they're called. David and someone whoever who are right who are primarily blamed for season eight and memed and whatever. It's like people blame them. The one thing, the one issue I have with them is that they rush it. So they have a. This is me being actually pissed off now. They have a contract with Disney because they're going to make a Star Wars film. That's cool. But they're obviously going to get paid a lot of money for that. HBO. George George R. R. Martin from the start wanted 12 seasons, which kind of gives you a vague idea of how many books he's going to write. Because yeah. Yeah. he only wrote up to season five. He wanted 12 seasons, so that's not even halfway through. HBO not only wanted more seasons because obviously they're raking in the money and the respect of doing Game of Thrones. They want this to continue as long as it's not going overboard. And then when they said there's only going to be eight seasons, HBO were like, oh, okay, but we'll give you the money for ten episodes. Yeah. And they still didn't take it. And I just get the feeling that, and this this isn't my original idea, these guys, these writers, wanted to end it so that they could go off and do their Star Wars thing. Yeah, they yeah. rushed it so that they could get off with their own, get that sweet, sweet Star Wars Disney money. Yeah. A lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of actors from Game of Thrones where Game of Thrones was the starting point and has made other oh, all the children, yeah, yeah all the yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Momoa getting so many starring roles now, bro. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm he, sure he was happy when he when when he got killed. You know, got killed off in Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah. No, because he doesn't get. To, uh, <laughs> But he he was the wife of Amelia Clark. You don't you don't <laughs> want to end that. You don't want to. But he, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I know there were some of the actors saying that it was getting. You know, it is a lot of it's ten years of your life, and that's what you'll be remembered for. It's like Kit Harrington saying that he didn't. He wasn't. He was determined not to be known as Jon Snow anymore. Actually, saying that. Uh, what's the actor that played Joffrey? Oh, he's uh, sick. He hates. He hates being. Yeah, mainstream he, actor. He's he, founded his own uh, Irish dancing company, and he does that now. Yeah, bro, he's so funny. Have you, seen, <laughs> have you seen him in interviews? He is awesome. Like, yes. bearing in mind, he is one of the most hated people. Yeah. you know, in TV, he will go into a room. I've seen a couple of interviews. One where he's in a cast with a couple of Game of Thrones actors that had died. So I think Charles Dance was there, and um, uh, one of the Nights Watch. He owned the sofa. Bearing in mind, Charles Dance is there, and he's a menacing guy who, who played uh, Tywin Lannister for those of you that, that don't know he was cracking jokes he was making Charles Dance laugh he was owning the situation it's like he must have so much such an ego and such a good confidence about him after playing that role you know like it's quite a hard role to play and then uh, trying to go out into the real world I, th- I think quite often uh, fans of a show still associate you as that person as that yeah. Horrible, horrible person. But if you do it right, you can be loved as a bad guy. So obviously, think think into Marvel MCU. Loki. Yeah. Loki is one of the most loved people in the MCU. There's still a video of Comic Con where he emerges. I think it's when they announced that the Avengers, the first Avengers film, that he was going to be the bad guy. All the lights went off and they came back on, and Tom Hiddleston in a full Loki outfit <laughs> was standing there, and the crowd just went mental. So if, if you do it right. If you play a bad guy well, you can be loved. And uh, Joffrey... There's a lot of loved villains. Yeah. Joffrey is yeah. one of them. Uh, Game of Thrones is actually one of those ones where you don't like the villains at all. You don't, don't like them at that. all. What? You like Cersei? I do, no. Ramsay. You like Ramsay? I loved him. Probably one of the best actors from Game of Thrones. Actors? Yeah. yeah one, but... one of the best performances. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's fair. But with, when you get... Villains which aren't as brutal as they have to be in Game of Thrones. People love them as well. So you think back to um, Darth Vader in Star Wars, the most iconic villain. Thanos. Thanos is loved. And that's that's primarily because Infinity War is a film about Thanos. 
Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. They, you do know why he's doing it, and he's not just a stupid villain written because they need a villain. But the villains in Game of Thrones, they're written well, so why don't people love them? They don't love them because they do diabolical things. Cersei, dying. Cersei is a boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you know how Cersei dies, by the way? So she died? What? Oh, I still haven't finished it. Oh, man. Thank you for saying that, dude. Yeah, so uh, You helped me along here. Um, well, this is still for doing a Game of Thrones uh, podcast. At least you don't have to finish it now. Were you ever going to? No, I was never going to finish it. So do you not know what happens? Do you not want to know what happens? I don't. I just feel like whatever the fans wanted would have happened. You're not going to watch it no. at all? No. So can I just spoil it for you? Yeah, you could go ahead, spoil it. This is perfect. After... Keep... After Arya killed that wild walker, I was expecting a more epic fight between... I was expecting her to kill him, but yeah. just I, not so... I, I know a lot of people basic. were angry because Jon Snow didn't kill him. Yeah. And I, was, I was a little bit upset. I wasn't angry. No, I don't, I don't care about that. It made I me, really didn't care. It like, made me John, think back to why was he resurrected in the first place. Who? Jon Snow. Jon Snow. Yeah. If that wasn't the purpose of him. That's another thing. Beric Dondarrion, or whoever's been brought back five times by the yeah. Lord of Light, his... He was brought back so that he could block the door so Arya could escape that one room, right? But he also escapes. He doesn't get trapped behind the door. He's blocking this corridor so yeah, Arya can get through the door. Yeah. He didn't need to. He gets through the door as well. <laughs> he does get through the yeah, door. Yeah, he yeah, dies yeah. on the other side, but, but the fact that he stopped and still managed to get through yeah. the door means that they didn't need to do it in the first place. Bit silly in my opinion. I do think Jon Snow should have fought him. I think that would have been cool. The f- when he's running towards him and the, and the Night King's bringing the... Uh, yeah, everyone, else, everyone else that was re- resurrected yeah. had a purpose for why they yeah. well with John Stone. Yeah. Thank you for listening to our Game of Thrones pilot podcast. This is part one. Part two will be coming out shortly. And in it, I'll be spoiling season eight for Ty. He, uh, he hasn't seen the last few episodes. Uh, he doesn't want to see it, refuses to watch them. So that's what you can expect in part two. Before you go, we have a small favour to ask. As you know, we are a brand new podcast and we need your help to get things off the ground. Please subscribe if you want to hear more of our content or alternatively rate and comment your thoughts as it would be really helpful for us to get traction, become discovered and fix things that you think could be improved. We'd also be eternally grateful if you would share our podcast and help grow our community. Thank you.